What up, Internet? This is Eugene. And Becca from Work Be Supply. And we're back with our annual Favorite Things video. In case you joined us uh, in the past year, we did one last year, so we'll link it below. You can take a look at that. But basically, we each pick a few of our favorite things, experiences, podcasts, things like that, um, and share them with you. And hopefully, you can share some of your favorite things with us as well so we can discover some more fun stuff for yes. 2019. Don't be shy. Leave those comments below. We want to hear from you. Woo! Let's just dive right into it. Yeah. Um, I think the first thing on both our lists is podcasts. That's right. Um, we listen to quite a few different podcasts, but I think often we kind of listen to the same ones for yeah, a long period really. of time. Yeah. yeah. But I've had a couple new ones that either have started up again or I've gotten into. They might not be new podcasts entirely. Um, and okay. I think you do as well. So you would, I would say, listen to more new podcasts than I do. <laughs> uh, so do you want to start? What does that mean? Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so this podcast I actually started listening to right at the tail end of 2017, um, and it really took me. Uh, and that's Reply All. Um, it's on Gimlet, that famous podcast network. channel network. Thank you. Um, and yeah, Reply All is really interesting. I think think originally they started off as being a podcast about the internet, but it's basically anything that has to do with technology. So that can include apps, telephones, uh, like TV shows in a way, um, and then of course the internet. So Twitter, social media, all that jazz. Um, so it's hosted by uh, Alex Goldman and PJ Vote. Um, they have a really great dynamic. They're really funny. Um, but a lot of the stories that they investigate can get a little eerie. Um, cause a lot of it has to do with like privacy, um, which I think can make all of us uncomfortable. It's a little close to home sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. Um, so they really just kind of like suck you in and then they have this really awesome outro song that's like kind of like electronic and it kind of like shakes you up and I pointed it out to Eugene and he was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so one episode that I really enjoyed, I listened to it twice, once by myself and then again with Eugene, uh, was one where one of the hosts, Alex, gets his computer uh, hacked basically by some call center scam. Um, and he decides to dig really deep and figure out why these guys are scamming people um, via their computers. Basically, they're calling them saying their computer has a virus and stuff happens. Um, but I really love uh, this podcast, especially if you want to learn more about like what's going on, on the internet. They investigate like weird conspiracy theories. Um, they help people when they have trouble with like their apps getting hacked as well. So it's just a really interesting podcast. Um, I like genuinely look forward to each episode every week. So yeah. that was a big standout for me. I year. highly recommend checking out the episode Becca's talking about and we'll link it down below. It's, it's called um, Long Distance Part 1 and 2. It's a great, great story and narrative and uh just like it's like watching a movie essentially yeah, and it's so long so if you need something to kind of just settle into it's a really great episode to listen to that's awesome so reply all was actually one of my kind of like secondary runner-ups i had a feeling you might pick it I so i didn't that. choose that one okay um but my podcast this year that i really loved was serial um a lot of you must a lot of you probably know serial from when it first started and it was sort of like a murder mystery type podcast where they followed one story throughout the whole season and they continually change up the format, which I really appreciate shows that do that. Um, their format this year is they actually go into and all of the serial episodes, if you haven't heard it before, they're kind of like investigative journalism into the criminal justice system and breaking apart how criminal justice system in America specifically works. So this season is especially interesting because they go, they focus in on one courthouse and each episode is a different story that goes through or somehow involves that courthouse. It really gives you a look into every small aspect of the criminal justice system um, through the lens of this one courthouse. And it's really fascinating. They get incredible access. You learn everything from how charges are laid to how bail is set, um, how police departments can harass uh, neighborhoods on an ongoing basis from both sides, from the resident side, from people involved uh, in the criminal justice system, like lawyers, police officers, judges, um, to people mm -hmm. who are caught up in the system themselves for a variety of reasons. Um, I really highly recommend, if you haven't heard Serial, go back and listen to the first couple seasons. 
but this season is really special and is really what I love, this sort of like deep dive uh, long form journalism uh, with a narrative tinge to it, if we can use that word there. <laughs> But I'm not a journalist, so... And I'm one of those people ha who have not listened to Serial at all. There you go. So now we're here. All right. So hopefully you've discovered some great new podcasts as well. We'll link ours down below, but you let us know uh, what podcasts mm -hmm. you're listening to. Yes. Um, we're always looking for new ones. We spend a lot of time editing, driving. Um, so Chilling. it helps just doing, uh, doing kind of like mundane tasks and learning something while you're at it. Yes. Cool. All right, so the next one up. Books. Old school podcasts. Books. <laughs> okay. You go first this time. So I had, I re read a lot of books this year, um, mostly audiobooks. Um, but one of them stood out more than any other, and that is American Kingpin. Um, this book is the wildest thing I have read in <laughs> so long. And it's the true story of the founder hunt for an ultimate downfall of the founder of the Silk Road. Not the Silk Road, like the trade route from ages ago, which a lot of people still assume is the Silk Road, um, but Silk Road, the dark web marketplace that, uh, the first marketplace in the dark web that bought and sold um, basically every illegal good imaginable. And this is the story of the literally kid who founded it and a step-by-step -step account of how it happened. And the reason we know so many details is because this guy actually kept a detailed diary on his <laughs> laptop that investigators now have and can retrace the story. And the yeah. genre that this book is written in is narrative nonfiction. So it's written in this really compelling way. It's as, as if it's happening in real time. The author will actually go to the places uh, where the story took place and sit in those locations and sort of like look out and describe the scene. He'll look up uh, weather patterns um, and different news events that happened around the day and kind of weave those into the narrative. It's really fascinating read. It's a th crazy thriller that happens to be true. It'll really get you thinking about uh, privacy, the evidence we leave online, um, and also just what is possible in the world today and where we're going as kind of like digital economies take hold of modern life. So I really recommend reading this book. Um, the book is once again titled American Kingpin and is by Nick Bilton, B-I-L-T-O-N, uh, and we'll link it down for you below. What's your book? Well, first of all, that sounds like a really long episode of Reply All, so... Essentially. Yes, we have a nice... And ends a lot worse for the people involved. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, so my book of the year was Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. Um, or Bachman? I don't know. Um, I read this book nearly a year ago, and it really resonated with me. I'm a very slow reader, so it felt like I was just absorbed in this book for a really long time. Um, it's very relevant um, so, and kind of surrounds the topic of the Me Too movement, um, but it takes that and it puts it into this small town scenario. Basically, the story revolves around the hockey team in this town of Beartown um, and how one act can affect the characters in the book and then it sort of ripples out throughout the town. Um, it's definitely a serious book. The first 100 pages are a little slow because there's a lot of character character development and there are a lot of characters, so even I constantly had to like re-remind myself of who's who. Um, but after those first 100 pages, things like really pick up. It's very shocking. Um, it's heartbreaking, um, but there are also other very heartwarming elements. Um, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Uh, and then earlier this year, Frederick actually released part two. Um, so it's called Us Against You, and I just started reading it. We'll see how it goes. Maybe it'll be my top book of 2019, um, but I'm really excited. It was a really beautiful story, so we'll see what happens to the characters in part two. And you should subscribe to find out if it uh, turns out good. Yeah. Awesome. So the next two categories are products that we've purchased or have been given to us okay. throughout the year. The first one we're going to do is under $100, and the next one is over $100. Uh, do you want to start with your under $100 product? Um, sure. I, I couldn't really think of, I feel like I didn't buy a lot of physical things this year, so it was hard for me to think of something under 100. 
and over 100. But one thing I realized that I spent money on that I really enjoyed was concerts. I went to so many concerts this year. Um, I really love music. It's a huge part of my life. Um, and I think it's just such a fantastic experience to be able to see your favorite musicians live. So I was able to see Bahamas three times. We saw Crunbin twice. Um, I saw Patrick Watson. I saw Charlotte Day Wilson. I saw Bernice. Um, down at a park by the water while there was lightning going on in the background. It was just amazing. Um, who else did we see? I don't know. I don't know. It sounds... it, oh, um, my friend Miles Francis from New York City, he was up twice, so I got to see him perform, and he's just amazing. I don't know. It was just a really... I felt like I spent a lot of money on... Oh, we saw Destroyer. Yeah. It was great, especially the first half of the year. A lot of music went down, um, but it was... I don't know. I really don't mind spending money on music especially if it's people you particularly admire. Uh, I think seeing like this showmanship and what they can do on stage and, and live in person just like gives you that much more appreciation for what they do. Um, so yeah, I think that is kind of my under 100 and over 100 because I know I spent nice. over $100 <laughs> on tickets this year. I think one of the things is like, it's not uncommon for us to get tickets for free. Um, online, there's a lot of like Instagram accounts that do contests oh, oh, yes. and uh, sort of like radio stations that do offers. I won St. Vincent tickets. Exactly. And that show is amazing. And to be honest, not a ton of people apply to these contests. Yeah. So usually you have like a one in a hundred chance of winning. And we typically go a few concerts a year for free through some of these like That's offers. True. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, luck. if you don't have a ton of money, uh, but you love music and you want like a great evening, Keep a keep track, keep an eye on those. Yeah, I would suggest tips? like following either some of your favorite music music venues or um, music labels. Not labels, um, like people who put on the shows. So like collective concerts, for example. That's how I won the producers, same. show yeah. producers, kind of. Yeah. Uh, promoters, there we go. Music concert promoters. Um, so collective concerts. That's how I won the same Vincent tickets, and I I always yeah. Awesome. So my favorite thing uh, under $100 uh, this year, last year, one of my favorite things over $100 was uh, PlayStation and a uh, bunch of new games. And this year, one game blew it out of the water, and that was Spider-Man. Now, I'm a huge <laughs> Spider-Man fan from like... Yeah, me too. My day one, maybe not Spider-Man's day one. Um, <laughs> but... Um, this game is amazing. If you love Spider-Man, if you love video games, you need to play the new Spider-Man on PlayStation. It probably is on Xbox. I don't know because I don't check. But the the game mechanics are amazing. It feels like you're yeah. acting out a full storyline. Uh, you want to know what happens next in the game. The experience of like swinging through New York City is so realistic and so visceral. It feels really rewarding, and the game looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. it, it's optimized for the PS4 Pro's um, extra processing power. So if you got one of those for the holidays, you can. That's a great game uh, to dip your toes into, and the expansion packs, uh, the downloadable content with the new Spider-Man is amazing as well. I love the storyline. I love where the entire Spider-Man franchise is going from the films to animated uh, films to the video games and hopefully it all starts to come together yeah. honestly i haven't had this was some of the most fun i've had all year playing spider-man so really recommend you check it out if that's a thing that you're into so that's my under 100 um, and my over 100 dollars was more kind of like technical things um, we bought a set of video lights uh, which we're using right now to record yeah. but we've used them on a ton of shoots and i put off buying uh, lights for a while just because the perfect ones weren't quite there and it feels like the technology is really caught up where there's a lot of really great affordable options i think our light set of three lights was probably around a thousand dollars maybe a little bit more so it's definitely not cheap but um we've used it on a ton of jobs we've flown across the country with them they've been really easy to use really helpful and i think have taken up our content and kind of like the production services we offer clients to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. um, they're the Aperture LED lights, uh, panel lights that are dimmable. Um, I'll get you the exact yeah. model name. There's a few versions, but we love these. They're super compact and do yeah. the job really well. So favorite music? My goodness. Um, well, I can't say that I listened to a lot of Crunbin this year, even though I did. Uh, cause that was my favorite album last year. Um, and I could say that 
um, Carly Rae Jepsen was my favorite music this year because apparently I listen to a lot of her as well. I'm a new fan. But I think my favorite music was um, just kind of like exploring new genres. Uh, we recently released, we recently released um, a new playlist that I created called Groove um, and just has like such a variety of, in my personal opinion, awesome genres, including like disco, R&B, soul, funk, jazz, all that good stuff. It makes you feel great. Uh, I love learning about um, musicians from other countries. We have some Middle Eastern music in there, which I absolutely adore. We have music that dates back from the 60s. We have music that sounds like it comes from the 60s. It has so many different influences in it. I can't even name the bands that are, in, <laughs> are involved because I just love all of them. Um, I just love like being able to expand the genre of music <clears throat> that I've always loved. So I've always really loved soul um, and jazz and kind of I love learning about bands that sort of take all those genres and more and just create something so unique and so their own. It makes you feel good. You can dance to it. You can chill out to it. Definitely check out Groove. I'm really proud of that playlist. I don't know what playlist I'm going to create next as a result. So I don't want to say that I had one specific music that I really love this year, but to get a feel for what I enjoy, check out Groove. Yeah. And the way to get those playlists, uh, we're, we put them out, we put out two last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to aim for four this year. Uh, it's just like new favorite music that we discovered. If you want to get those playlists, you need to be subscribed to our email list. Um, yeah. There's a link down below. If you subscribe right now, uh, at the end of the week, we'll send out the playlist again to everyone who's uh, yes. come on board since we have we sent it out last time. Yeah. Um, so I'll you can you. still get it. We'll link our previous playlist. Um, what was it called? Chill, Chill Vibes. vibes. Um, Very original. In there as well. So yeah, you can get the whole shebang. Yeah. Subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, there's a lot more fun stuff like that that you know improve your day to day and uncover fun new things uh, throughout Make you feel good. the month. So. What was your favorite music? My favorite music, um, like you, I feel like I, I listen to a lot of I listen to a lot of the same music that I did last year yeah. and just like yeah. really dove in deep. Um, there's a few <laughs> albums that I kind of really like that I don't know if they're my favorite, but they were fun albums. Uh, Kids See Ghosts was one of them. But I think one of my favorite kind of surprise albums was Nicki Minaj's Queen. Um, it's so much fun. It's got a really great kind of flowy vibe. Uh, feels like classic Nicki, great singing, great hip hop, a lot of fun features. I would really recommend giving this album a listen. There's yeah. a few songs that are like, eh. okay. but for the most part, um, I think it's a really great Nicki album and it's kind of like gets you excited and is inspiring in a sense that a lot of hip hop albums are. Um, hmm. So yeah, check out Nicki Minaj's Queen. Sweet. So that's our favorite new music from the year. If you have a band that you've recently discovered or an artist you really love that doesn't get enough attention, Leave us a comment letting us know who it is. We're always looking to fill up um, our playlists with oh, yeah. new music. Please. So Give me the ideas. All right. Next up is YouTube channels. Okay. You know, we watch a ton of YouTube. Yeah. Um, it's it's all, we all we watch. <laughs> so these are the channels we've been really enjoying this year. Um, for me personally, it hasn't been a year of discovering a lot of new channels. Yeah, I agree. I'd love to kind of point out some of the other channels I haven't mentioned before that I really like. And yeah, I don't know. Have you discovered anyone like brand new, brand new? No. Yeah. <laughs> We've been busy working this year. Yeah. Well, that's okay. I'm curious. Which one did you choose? So for mine, I chose Smarter Every Day. Okay. Um, and there's a specific set of videos that I would recommend you watch uh, to get into it. But mm. Smarter Every Day is a YouTube channel run by a guy named Dustin. Uh, Dustin. No, Dustin. I don't know his last name. I'm pretty sure he He's... either used to work at NASA or currently works at NASA or is some sort of rocket scientist <laughs> yeah. in his spare time slash day job. But he's like like a legit rocket science type person. Yeah. Um, but he's really great at communicating complicated science ideas in really compelling ways and finding out stories uh, in the world, running his own experiments on those uh, ideas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he might read up about an abstract science concept and then build a whole set 
of experiments to kind of show you it in practical life, like how it actually yeah. looks and works. But the video series that, or the set of videos that I really appreciated was he did a set of, I think like three videos maybe on virtual reality and some of the kind of like cutting edge advances in virtual reality. So everything from a omni uh, directional, Omnidirectional? I think it's omnidirectional. Omnidirectional treadmill, and that's a treadmill that lets you run in any direction, kind of like you see in Ready Player One. And by kind of, the company he visits is the one that makes <laughs> the treadmill that they show off in Ready Player One. And then he also goes and visits these insane gloves that basically help you feel things that aren't there, and they, they kind of create pressure sensors. So I'll link those videos down below. Yeah. Yeah, those are the ones I really yeah. enjoyed and he doesn't release videos like super consistently, but whenever he does, it's always worth my time and I think it's going to be worth yours. Very nice. Cool. Well, one of the YouTube channels that we discovered several years ago, but I continue to enjoy this year was the Bon Appetit YouTube channel. Guys, Bon Appetit is where it's at. Their magazine, it's okay. It has a lot of ads in it but their YouTube channel is awesome. They have some really wonderful personalities that are people that actually work at the magazine. So that includes testing out all the recipes that go into the, go into the magazine. So two of the standout uh, video series that we really enjoy are It's Alive with Brad Leone and um, Pastry Chef Makes um, with Claire Saffitz, whose last name I literally just looked up. Um, so basically It's Alive with Brad, he basically, uh, demonstrates recipes that involve like different bacteria bacteria or cultures or foods that take like a really long time to I don't know process yeah it involve, involve fermentation yes, or fermentation. kind of like raw eating raw food yeah um you know like lately like do like hunting or like mm -hmm. for example making chocolate so from like how the bean is grown to it being fermented mm -hmm. to then being refined to mm -hmm. then being turned into a chocolate bar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and recent episodes. Yeah. There was a hunting episode. There was a mushroom foraging episode. Uh, he went to Tuscany to learn how olive oil was made. Um, and what we particular, particularly love about this series is that the creator of it, um, a guy named Vinny, who also films the show and I'm pretty sure edits the show, sort of acts as like a secondary character, which involves or includes a lot of making fun of Brad, um, including like his accents or the way he talks. Um, it involves like a lot of little characters and graphics popping up on screen, um, which I don't know. I particularly really enjoy. I think it's hilarious. And it sort of just like points out all the like the little funny interactions statements yeah and... that, that Brad makes um, and then with Claire she has a series where she takes um, junk food so that could be Oreos Cheetos Skittles Gushers Snickers bars Snickers bars Kit Kat my favorite um, and she attempts to make like a gourmet version of them so it can take anywhere from a week to a week plus um, and sometimes she does really well I think the Oreos were one that she had like zero issues with sometimes she just has to like like make, <laughs> she just has to experiment with like the sugar or the butter like five times over until she gets that like perfect consistency that matches like the stretchiness of a, like whatever goes into a Skittle or yeah. like the nougat in a chocolate bar. Like what makes a Skittle a Skittle, like, you know, beyond it's like appearance. Yes. And she always tries to make it gourmet. So with the Skittles, she didn't want to just have artificial flavors. She used like dried strawberries or frozen strawberries rather. And it's, like always really impressive. I've decided that I just really enjoy food science. So those, and I, I love cooking, but just the science behind food is just really fascinating to me. So both Brad and Claire demonstrate a lot of like really interesting things you can do in the kitchen um, that you would have like never even imagined. Um, and then Bon Appetit also has other series with other people who are part of the magazine where they, it's nothing quite quirky or unusual about it. It's just showing you how to make certain recipes. Uh, and then there are a few other series as well. Um, so yeah, Bon Appetit, it's surprisingly amazing. Definitely check it out. Yeah. So moving on to apps. Um, yes. Your favorite app for this year? Yeah, absolutely. So this app came into my life later this year. Uh, I think I started to use it in maybe late October, and that is the 8Fit app. I'm constantly working on my health and fitness, um, and I also adapted or adopted a vegetarian diet in June. Vegetarian slash light pescatarian. Adopted and then adapted. That's absolutely right. Yep. 
Um, and so one of the things that I really struggled with early on uh, in being vegetarian was I didn't really enjoy eating a lot of like the processed foods that are out there. So those are like frozen little veggie ball bite things or um, like veggie patties. I don't know. I just try to stay away from like junk and food. So this app has really helped me, uh, especially with eating vegetarian. Um, basically, it's a health and fitness app, so it includes workouts. Uh, most of them are HIIT workouts. They range from, you know, 8 to 10 minutes to up to 17 minutes. I just did one today. Um, and then there's a full meal plan, but the meal plan is part of the paid subscription. I know a lot of people don't like to pay for apps, but I'm someone who spent a lot of money on personal training in the past, like a lot of money. So paying, you know, under $100 for an app is not a big deal to me. Uh, I'm using it every day and this app actually has really tasty meals in it. It serves you up a meal plan for the week, but you can go in and change those meals and all the ingredients um, and the amounts in each recipe are changed depending on what your like calorie intake is for that period of time. Uh, I've made a lot of the meals for Eugene, which he's also really enjoyed. Um, so this app has just made my life a whole lot easier um, because I can continue to eat like nutritious whole foods, um, on a vegetarian diet and then also know that I'm getting like enough protein which is obviously important for a vegetarian um, but then also enough carbs and fats and stuff like that um, like a variety of different meals yeah I think when we, we first started eating like more vegetarian than we have been before yeah it gets pretty boring very quickly because yeah, a was, lot of it's the same thing absolutely that was a point I wanted to make like that was something I was really struggling with you're like oh I guess I'll make a salad again or like whatever or soup um there are so many like recipes in this app that I've enjoyed and you can put like a little heart by them so they're labeled as your favorites. But there are so many recipes I haven't even tried yet and I'm only a few months in and I've seen results and I actually really enjoy the workouts as well. Um, so definitely check it out. There are two subscription um, levels but I won't get into that right now. But I really enjoyed it and I'm really excited to keep using it in 2019. Awesome. 8Fit. You sort of inspired me to name a second app, but I'm going to start with the one I have on my list originally. Ooh, cool. um, okay. And that is the Spark email app. So Beck and I both used to use Newton for a long time. It is, again, a subscription-based email app, but um, for someone who's like trying to manage a ton of different email accounts constantly, yeah. uh, it is really worth the price, and it was a fantastic service, which unfortunately... It, was not sustainable for the company making it. They didn't want to take on a huge investment and, and then they shut it down. Um, so for a while I was looking at a replacement and the app that I landed on is Spark. It doesn't have all the same features as Newton does, but there's a few things that I really love. The UI is great. I love that it works across all devices. It's got a calendar built into it. Um, and it has a really great template feature, which almost no other uh, email client has. The one thing I wish it had that's, that Newton did, but it doesn't, is the seeing if someone has opened your email uh, mm -hmm. and read it. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have that, but it can delay sending an email so you can schedule it to send tomorrow morning or wait for if someone doesn't respond to you within a certain days, uh, reply to them automatically with a pre-written statement. Um, so there's a lot of great features for power users, but it's just like a really pleasant app to use. And best of all, it's free. I highly recommend you check it out. But the other app I wanted to mention, which yeah. I don't think I talked about last year, but um, it's one that I also pay money for uh, on an ongoing basis, and that's Calm, C-A-L-M. Uh, and Calm is a meditation app. I've been meditating like kind of pretty consistently on and off for, I think like, three, four years maybe now, it's maybe longer. Yeah. But really, once I switched to using the Calm app, um, I've done it way more, way more consistently. Um, and one of my favorite aspects of it, if you, you can use it for free and there's like the first introductory course like every meditation app has, and you can run that again and again. But uh, when you pay for it, what you get is a daily recorded meditation se session. And it's like, not only do they guide you through your meditation, but there's always like a thoughtful lesson or example or something to reflect on uh, that they discuss at the end of the day. And that's really become my favorite part. I really look forward to that every single day. It's often super relevant to either like the time of the year or what's going on in my own life. Um, and I'm just really excited to listen to it. I do it first thing in the morning. Um, I do 10 
minute sessions. Right now I'm on, uh, I think like a three week streak of doing it every day. The longest I've done it consistently is about two months or so. Um, but I really want to make a video in the new year uh, about meditation and why I think it's really, really important um, and how it's helped me personally. So if you're looking for an introduction uh, to meditation or you're looking to do it more consistently, I would highly recommend you check out the Calm app. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Love it. Now, our final two things are an experience uh, that we've had or participated in and a favorite project that we worked on. So why don't we tackle experience first? Okay. I have no idea what yours is. I know. Um, so yeah, what's your favorite experience of okay. 2018? I don't think you're going to be expecting this. Or maybe you will. So Hanging out with me. Pretty much, yes, it's true. So some of you may know or not know that I'm a big Disney nerd. It's true. So earlier this year in April, Eugene and I were able to go to Disney World for two days. I honestly totally forgot that was even this year. That's like... It was. It was in April. Um, so we drove up to Orlando from Naples and we stayed overnight on the Disney property. And it was just so much fun. It was so perfect. Um, so why this experience was so special to me is because I, like I said, I'm a big Disney nerd um, and I was fortunate to visit Disney kind of throughout my childhood when I was eight. 14 and the most recent like kind of big trip was when I was 22 and that was like seven years ago Eugene hasn't really visited Disney um, since he was really young We did one day at Magic Kingdom a few years ago. It was not successful uh, It was just like I thought it was pretty successful. No, it's fun, but it was like so so busy so busy um, But it was nice to go overnight a little less rushed So what I really enjoyed about it was that I got to share some of my favorite rides with Eugene uh, we were able to visit Hollywood Studios, Epcot, and Animal Kingdom over three days, and there are some really special rides at all those parks. I won't go into details, um, but another really fun thing was that I also rode um, Tower of Terror for the first time with Eugene, and I'm so glad I did because it's an incredible ride. It's probably one of my favorite rides of the park now, even though it's terrifying, but it's just like such a wicked sensation going up and down and screaming the whole way through. Um, so I'm really glad we got to do that. The park wasn't too busy. Um, the drive up and down from Naples was really lovely. Um, and the hotel we stayed at, which was Coronado Springs, which was awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Um, and yeah, we just, we ate great food. We got to see fireworks. I don't know. It was great. I'm really glad that we got to do that together this year. And I'm looking forward to visiting more Disney parks with Eugene, hopefully in the near future. Ooh. We'll see. Awesome. So what was your favorite experience? So my favorite experience of the year was something a little out of the ordinary for most people. And that was uh, driving a sports car on a <laughs> racetrack. Um, so it was my 30th birthday this year, um, which was a fantastic experience in and of itself. Um, but Becca and one of our good colleagues, Rash, uh, generously got me it's like it's called like a supercar experience yeah. I guess or something like that there's a racetrack kind of far away from here but a few hours drive um, and you can get a variety of cars from like different Ferraris to Lamborghinis to Porsches I guess and yeah. I got to drive a Lamborghini I don't know a ton about cars so don't ask me what it is here's the video of me doing it but it was super fun and I've kind of like the most passively interested in car mm -hmm. and car racing person you will meet because I don't really care at all about cars in an, of like getting excited about a kind of car coming out mm -hmm. but I love the mechanics of cars I love driving um, and I've always loved playing driving video games um, and watching like racing documentaries so I really wanted to try driving on a racetrack myself and it was amazing. Now my next year is gonna be filled trying to figure out how to get slowly into race car driving, um, <laughs> which I'm sure my friends and family won't be too keen on. But if you have a car you wanna give me uh, that is, and teach me how to fix it and things, um, <laughs> I'm open to it. So yeah, looking for team sponsors, um, send us an email if that sounds like you. We'll make videos about me learning to drive a sports car. Cool. Yeah, that was just an incredible experience, all joking aside. And yeah, thank you so much You're for uh, doing that for me. And I've been I hope, planning that for like a year. I hope it doesn't end there. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna become like a 
race car driver or anything anytime soon. <laughs> but I think it's definitely a world uh, I want to explore more. And this year I took Becca to the Indy yeah. for the first time, which was she really loved. I had so much fun. <laughs> um, and it was just really cool. So yeah, I'm excited to do more of that, explore that world more. And if you ever have the experience or the chance to do it, I uh, highly recommend it. One of the other things that's available there is like you can go as a passenger in a professional driver's car mm. and it'll take you on a few kind of like more intense laps around the track. Um, so I opted not to do that. So that yeah, maybe maybe next year we'll get you on there. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was my favorite experience of this past year. Good. <laughs> I think I'll stick with boats because nice. I love and Tower boats of Terror. so much. And Tower of Terror. All right, hmm. so for our final thing is the thing that takes up most of our time is working on different projects, yeah. whether it's personal projects, client projects, random projects at home. We're always trying to do something, make something new. Help um, someone out. Help someone out. We're makers and creators at our core, so we're always working on something. So we did a lot of projects this year, probably yes. more than almost any other year, I would assume. Um, what was your favorite project of the year? Well, I think it's easy to say that our BC trip, where we got to work with a veterinarian clinic in Prince Rupert, was our favorite project of the year. So yeah, I think that was the, my favorite project as well. To preface this a bit, we have a partner, um, Michelle, and she has a company called Studio May, which is um, a kind of marketing agency for creative businesses. Uh, and we worked with her a lot in the past, but we really deepened our relationship uh, this past year. I've come on board as the head, head of content creation for Studio MA. And this is was kind of like one of our bigger projects together. Um, yeah. So you should definitely check out Studio MA on Instagram and check out their website. I'll link it down below. But we got to go to very remote British Columbia. Quite remote. Uh, Prince Rupert. Yeah. And yeah, make a ton of videos. Becca was doing was photographing the residents of Prince Rupert, the workers at the clinic that we shot at, um, and then we got to go on a boat ride around the island. We got to go through a walk through the park. We got to fly a drone for the first time, which was amazing. We saw a bunch of eagles. We saw seals. We saw porpoises. It was beautiful. Honestly, just a fantastic experience from yes. the people we met oh my gosh. to the people, our clients and our partner, Michelle, who we were with, mm -hmm. um, were fantastic. The people we were shooting were amazing. Yeah. The town was beautiful. Yeah. Nature was out of this world. It was a very quick trip. We were only there from like a Monday to a Friday. The first two days we were pretty much stuck inside interviewing people all day um, and it was a little rainy and drizzly but then our last full day there um, Eugene and I completely lucked out and it was beautiful. It wasn't too cold. We got to go on the boat ride. We got to walk on this trail and meet some lovely dog owners and just get like all that supporting content that we needed um, for all the interviews that we had done the previous two days. So we were so lucky. It was just the trip, um, sorry, the job kind of came out of the blue in September and everything came together quite quickly and we went um, sort of mid-November and it was just like fantastic. And it was so great to go to BC again. We hadn't yeah, gone in like four years. So. And one of the things we got to do for the first time uh, was use a drone uh, in our videos. Mm -hmm. So that was like a really fun experience in and of itself. Um, hopefully we'll get to share some of those with you soon. But that's something I think would be cool to integrate yeah. more into our workflow in the coming year. Um, doing that kind of like trial trial period with a drone really showed like just how much it can elevate the content, obviously, but also how easy it is to use and fly. Mm -hmm. um, it all came together pretty effortlessly. Yeah, you did a great Super job. compact. Uh, if you're curious, we're using the DJI Mavic Pro uh, Platinum, I believe. Uh, drone so it looked beautiful um, I really want to do that more mm -hmm. and I think travel for work more mm -hmm. shoot kind of like out in the wilderness more <laughs> um, yeah. I think that would be really incredible yeah like the revenant no but hopefully share more people's stories and work with lots more amazing companies I think that's what we're really looking forward to in 2019 and yeah. I am We've had a lot of great new clients come on board um, and we're super excited to continue growing, expanding our team. Um, 
one of the best actually now that I think about it experiences What's that we that? totally missed was hiring Netta who is yeah. our retoucher she has been yeah. so fantastic and she started with us um, kind of towards the beginning of the year nope in uh, May in May um, yeah um, so we've had her for most of the year it's been amazing um, having her support us in projects she's helped us get projects out faster mm -hmm. on a more consistent basis she's let us do more it's been an incredible learning experience of just like adding another person to our team yep. we're definitely going to be expanding in the next year and bringing on more people uh, so that's very exciting and for me personally it was a big goal to try to uh, sort of like shift off the work of Becca and I you know there's only a, so much more work you can constantly do uh, and we've been hitting that limit a lot so by bringing on additional people and refining how we work with them and with our clients um, is just going to allow us to do way more in 2019 and onwards. Uh, we've got some really big things planned. So yeah, we're really excited. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching this video. Yes, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you had just as much fun as you had last year. Everything we talked about is linked down in the description below. Please hit subscribe. We've released a ton of videos in 2018 and we're going to just increase this and increase the output and also improve the consistency um, in the next year the next month especially is going to be packed full of useful videos that are going to help you succeed as a freelancer in 2019 so you won't want to miss those subscribe to our youtube channel hit that like button if you enjoyed something in this video let us know what you've been enjoying this year and make sure you subscribe to our email list. That's where all the action happens. That's how you get the playlist. That's how you find out about new products and projects. And also, if you want to work for us, that's who we reach out to first. Mm -hmm. So everything's linked down below. Thank you very much for... Share this video with a friend if you liked it. That's, that's good really too. Um, and we hope you have a wonderful 2019. And we can't wait to share more with you as the year progresses. Yeah. Thanks a lot. See ya. See you next time.